The next question we'll address is how do temperature and humidity affect transmission? This is important because we know that the flu has strong seasonality. This shows the weekly pneumonia and influenza excess death rate um, over the past, over a, let's say, 30-ish year, 40-ish year period. And you can see that there are these big peaks in the winter time. So that kind of lines up with the, the dotted lines, which I assume are January of each year. So the peak is often kind of just after January, maybe January, February of each year. Um, and that is true uh, that the peaks in influenza, at least in temperate regions, happen during the winter time. So in the upper left-hand corner, you can see the pattern of flu for Bismarck, North Dakota, which is very cold. And you can see that the peaks there were in December and January, the winter time. And then if we switch down to the lower right-hand corner and look at Sydney, Australia, their peak is probably somewhere around August or so, which is their, their winter time over their cold season. Um, things are a little bit different in the tropics. You can see in the upper right, the pattern for Singapore. There is a, there are kind of two peaks, one in December, January, and then one in the middle of the year. Um, there's not much seasonal variation in temperature there, but there's some thought that it has to do with the rainy period, perhaps. And then in Fortaleza, Brazil, you can see there's yet a different pattern where the peaks are in kind of February, or sorry, March, April-ish. So we're going to talk about um, seasonal, how temperature and humidity affect virus survival. Um, but this is not, probably not the only thing that affects seasonality. There are many other factors that play into the severity and transmission of the flu as shown in this figure. There's um, immune factors which may vary seasonally. Uh, there's lifestyle factors that may vary seasonally. There are also external factors. In particular, I want to point out um, people have speculated that maybe there's more crowding during wintertime indoors, although frankly we spend almost all of our time indoors year-round, so I'm not sure how big a factor that is, but um, I, all of these really could play into the observed seasonality of the flu and colds. In general, um, vi viruses survive better at lower temperature, so if you start heating things up then they start dying off faster. And with regard to relative humidity, many, but not all viruses in aerosols and droplets and on surfaces where those droplets have dried out, many survive best at low relative humidity, below about 40%. There are some that also survive very well at very high relative humidity above, say, 95%. And I want to point out that even though most of the studies have focused on kind of outdoor weather conditions, because that's the data that are available, um, I think indoor temperature and relative humidity are key because most transmission occurs indoors because that's where the people are. And that's where um, virus will be more, you'll see higher levels of virus indoors than you will in outdoor air and, and higher levels indoors on surfaces than outdoors. I showed you part of this graph earlier. It showed how the uh, decay rate of flu virus varied with relative humidity. That was the black line. But there's also several, many studies in the literature that show more of a U shape where there's, um, there's more decay kind of in this intermediate humidity region, maybe between 40 and let's say 80% relative humidity and better survival at uh, dry conditions below 40% and maybe at very humid conditions. One thing that we've noticed is that these, the shapes of these relationships depend a lot on the composition of the liquid that's carrying the virus. So that, that kind of monotonic relationship was observed in uh, liquids that contain salt only or almost all salt. And we see more of this U-shape relationship in liquids that contain both salt and protein, which is more realistic. So studies um, that we've conducted with Seema Lakdawala at the University of Pittsburgh on H1N1, so circulating flu virus in aerosols, um, we found that this shows the viability now just in kind of the percent that's still infectious as a function of relative humidity. We look, looked over a wide range of different humidities between 20% and almost 100%, and we saw that at all of those humidities, the virus remained uh, pretty uh, 
didn't seem to lose any viability. So the viability is still around 100%. Um, and this was for virus that was uh, aerosolized in a, a cell culture medium called L15 that was supplemented with human bronchial epithelial cell wash collected from patients. And so again, we see that the virus in aerosols maintains high viability across all relative humidities that were tested. And this figure further shows um, the flu virus in stationary droplets that are sitting on surfaces. And again, it shows viability as a function of relative humidity. Um, the red again shows the virus in the, the L15 cell culture medium that has been supplemented with the human bronchial epithelial cell wash. And you can see that the, the virus maintains good viability under all conditions there. But then when we put the virus just in the cell culture medium without the supplementation from the, the human cells, that the viability was quite a bit lower, you know, down to maybe one to 10%. Um, and this was also true, so this was for flu virus. We did the same type of experiment with a, another virus of bacteriophage called Phi6. So bacteriophage are viruses that infect bacteria. There are also viruses that infect plants and animals, and pretty much anything. And we saw, again, the same result that where if the media contained uh, the, the kind of human respiratory secretions, that viability was preserved. There was less decay. Here's what we have seen for the original SARS coronavirus. This is the one that was, came out in around 2002 and 2003. We don't have a good data set yet for the currently circulating SARS coronavirus. And these conditions were at different humidities. So on the left-hand side is 95%. The right-hand side is 80 to 89%. So these are pretty high humidity conditions. We, don't, we wouldn't typically see these in most parts of the US. Um, but I think these were done in, um, in Hong Kong. But you can see that, uh, so the y-axis in this case shows the viral titer reduction, or the amount of decay you can think of it as. And it's a time series. And they did three different temperatures. So on the left-hand side, you can see that the dark blue at 38 degrees Celsius, they lose, they start losing a virus, kind of the reduction is two, meaning two orders of magnitude or a factor of 100 at seven hours. And then that continues to increase over time. But at the lower temperatures of 33 and 28, um, we don't see much reduction, maybe one, which would, these are log units, I presume. Uh, which would be an order of magnitude or kind of 90% loss after 24 hours. On the right, then again, that's extremely high humidity conditions. This is for 10 microliters of, of the virus suspension put onto a plastic surface. Um, on the right-hand side, we see less decay at, uh, at these 80 to 89% humidity. Um, and again, we do see uh, temperature dependence. So just to conclude here, dried SARS coronavirus 1 on plastic decayed faster at higher temperatures and then faster at 95% humidity than at 80 to 89%. Um, and in another study, which I, I'm not showing the data for here, it decayed much more quickly at 56 to 60 degrees Celsius than at 4 degrees Celsius. Uh, that's not surprising. It, down at very cold temperatures, viruses tend to be preserved well. 56 and 60, of course, are extremely hot. I think they're, this is thinking of like sterilization maybe. Um, we wouldn't see either of these temperatures in the typical indoor environment. So it's very clear how temperature can affect virus viability. But um, one thing I think we don't appreciate is how might relative humidity affect transmission. And so the top panel here, I'm looking at the physics of the aerosols and how they, they'll tra be transported in the air. And we'll start over on the right-hand side at very high relative humidity, because this is where, how the droplets are emitted. And if we have a droplet that's 25 microns, it'll settle to the ground in one minute. But, and it, it hasn't evaporated much because the humidity is very high. But if we start out with that same droplet that was originally 25 microns, and we're at much lower relative humidity conditions, well, that's gonna shrink down to a size of about 10 microns, and that will settle in about eight minutes. So now it can stay suspended in air longer. Another way that relative humidity can affect virus viability is that it affects the chemistry of the droplets containing the virus. So again, over on the right-hand side, at very high relative humidity, our virus comes out in its respiratory fluid droplet. That droplet contains salts shown in green, 
protein shown in purple at near physiological conditions. Those levels concentrations haven't changed much because there hasn't been any evaporation. But as you start to get evaporation, let's look at the medium relative humidity condition. We lose the water, but we don't lose the salts and proteins. So those salts and proteins become more concentrated. And now those conditions might be less favorable for virus survival. At, very, at lower relative humidities, below about 40%, we tend to, the evaporation is complete, we lose all the water. So we still have the salts and proteins there, but without them being in solution, they're, um, without anything being in solution, it seems like the, the virus tends to survive pretty well under those conditions, at least the types of envelope viruses that we're talking about, um, which are flu virus and, and coronavirus. The, the envelope refers to a lipid bilayer that the virus kind of takes from the host cell. And there are viruses that have an envelope, and there are also ones that do not have an envelope. So we've seen that viruses in air and on surfaces survive better at lower temperatures. Um, and survival varies with humidity and with the composition of the liquid. <clears throat> 